Greetings AP Calc BC students. Going to take a look at our second half of example one. If you tuned in earlier, you saw parts A and parts B of example one. We're going to finish it off now. So if we take a look at what we did in parts A and B, we noticed that we had developed this equation for this vector value function that we can kind of think of it a little bit easier. This is x squared plus y squared equal 9, a circle with radius 3. Now if we move on to our part C, uh, which is on this page right here, we noticed that uh, we were asked to show that particle's path and uh, to indicate the arrows uh, of direction. So what we're going to do with this is we're going to go ahead and graph to the best of our freehand ability that nice circle with the radius of 3 and center at 0, 0. And that's not too bad. A lot of you don't know this, but when teachers go to college or future teachers go to college to study to be math teachers, they take circle drawing 101. And I got a B minus in that class. So here we go. We're going to figure out what the direction of our uh, motion is by just basically playing around with some numbers and plugging them in for t some times and figuring out what's x and y going to be equivalent to. So we have our t and we have our x and we have our y. If we do let t be 0, it's a great place to start. We have 3 times the sine of 0, which of course is 0, and 3 times the cosine of 0, which is going to be 3. So we know that at 0, 3, we're going to be starting up here. Right? That's when time is equal to zero. Now that doesn't tell us much yet. So we might have to plug in another value. Sometimes pi would work, pi over two. You know, it's really up to you. I got a feeling that pi is probably going to be good because of the fact that we're already dividing by two and that could help us not go all the way to the other side of the circle, which would be bad because we wouldn't be able to tell what direction we went. So if we have three times the sine of pi over two, that is 3 times 1, so that puts us at 3, and 3 times the cosine of pi over 2 is 3 times 0. So lo and behold, boom, here we are. That's our position at time 3. So we know that we're moving in this clockwise direction, and you only need to really put one arrow to indicate that. Now for part D, this is where you're going to be doing something a bit different. Find the velocity and acceleration at time pi, and then draw those velocity and acceleration vectors. Well, if you re recall, we worked through this problem on the previous page where we had already found the velocity. And all we're going to do in this particular case is we are going to evaluate that velocity at pi. So if you recall, our velocity was 3 halves cosine of t. So in this case, we're going to have 3 halves cosine of, uh, I'm sorry, we had 3 halves cosine t over 2 is what I meant to say. Now we're going to have 3 halves cosine pi over 2. I almost didn't know where I was there for a second. All that will be multiplied by i. And then the other part, um, tell you what, let's put the plus here and then I'll retain that minus in that position. And we have negative 3 halves sine of pi over t times j. Now this will eventually simplify, of course. The cosine of pi over 2 is 0. The sine of pi over 2 is 1. And all that is left standing is negative 3 halves j. So you might ask, how do we graph that particular vector? Well, you first go to where pi is located on your position. right? So we have this particle moving around gets right here at this point at time pi, and its velocity vector is negative 3 halves j. Notice that only contains a j component, a y component, so we only have motion in a vertical direction. Because that's negative, we're going to be moving downward or wanting to move downward. The circle's not going to let us, though. And we have something that would be 1 and 1 half blocks long. That would be the 3 halves, and that is the velocity vector at time pi. We'll talk a little bit more about that in a moment. Next, we move on to the acceleration at time pi. If you recall from part b, we had an acceleration expression that was negative 3 fourths times the sine of t over 2. We're going to replace the t with pi. Keep your 
i component there. We do the same thing. I'm going to use that plus negative. Right. Again, if you have to look back, I apologize that these are on separate pages, so you may have to flip back a little bit. But we had negative 3 fourths cosine of t over 2, which in this case would be a pi over 2. If you need to double check those, you could pause the video and verify that we have assembled those correctly. Now in the evaluation here, we have negative 3 fourths times 1, which is negative 3 fourths. Then you throw your i, and then we have negative 3 fourths times the cosine of pi over 2, which is the 0. And so the j component completely disappears. So all we have now is an i component at this point. The fact that it's negative means it's going to want to be drawn to the left. And we have something like this. And so there we go. That is going to be what our vectors look like. Now let's think about what do they perhaps mean. Well, I think the best way to describe this would be think about your younger days when you were riding rides and playing out on the playgrounds. It's funny because a lot of the rides that maybe you saw as kids, uh, especially you teachers that might be watching this, don't even exist anymore because they're kind of dangerous. Like the little merry-go-rounds that existed on the playgrounds, which no longer really exist because of kids getting caught underneath them and whatnot. Kind of a morbid thought there. But think about spinning around on a, a ride like that, and this is the aerial view. If you happen to be the particle and let's let's make you this nice orange particle this is you this is you as a particle and we could actually move around this particular ride but by the time time pi is reached what happens is that this force upon your body wants to send you along this path at that particular length but the ride is going to take you along this path and sometimes that's what gives us the sensation of fun or fear, <laughs> depending on how fast or long that vector is, when you ride an amusement park ride. So you have this outward force that's wanting to go this way, but you're actually going this way. Now, the acceleration force is something completely different. Notice that it's sort of moving inward here, inside of the circle there at that particular moment. It's not very far, it's only three-fourths of a block, but that's got a very special name. If you've studied this in physics, it's called the centripetal force with a P, not the centrifug centrifugal, which is completely different. That's like, that's like a force that's sending you outside here instead. And so we have this interesting relationship between these two acceleration and velocity vectors as this particle moves around. You're going to work through a lot of interesting problems in your skill builder that uses the idea of an amusement park ride where you can actually figure out the types of, of fun or the forces that you're going to be having placed upon yourself at various points on the ride. Anyway, I hope this helps out. you are got a little preview here of example two, which is going to have you work with a very similar vector value function and find some of the similar things that we talked about. Stick around for that one. Thanks for joining.